All right, guys, welcome back to another KevCam Night class tonight. Uh, tonight, we are going to finish up on the Swiss screw machine, uh, the part three. So if you guys remember from uh, two weeks ago, we did the Swiss type over every um, all the functions on the main spindle and going through the ins and outs of what we did here. Uh, basically, just doing some simple turning, um, doing some B-axis milling, and doing some wrap features along with some flat features with that live tooling. Um, basically, just testing out all the functionality of the tooling. So let's go ahead and we'll play this through from the beginning here and just to kind of see where we left off. So let's go ahead and do a machine sim. All right, so we got our machine sim opened up here now, and what we'll do is zoom in here, and we'll kind of play it through a little bit slow, but doing our part off to our, as uh, we talked about as a reference, um, just doing some OD turning right now. Let's speed it up a little bit for you. Doing our threading, doing some drilling, and now you can see we are machining the face currently. That uh, that B axis there, doing some drilling, doing our flat mill, and now we're doing the wrap geometry on there, and then it's coming over. Subspindle is grabbing onto it, and now we are on the subspindle, and which leaves us off where we are right now. So let's go ahead and hop out of here. And what we'll do here is we're going to start machining everything on that subspindle now. So first thing what I'm going to do is just do a simple facing operation. So I'll come over here and I'll go to my turning tab. We'll do a face. Do a new geometry here. And I'm going to face off the front of my part. Hit the green check mark. And I'm going to do my modified geometry so I can extend it to the stock. And we'll go ahead and grab our tool. And we're going to grab our tooling from the back side now. So which is going to be my, my back side tooling right here. So we'll grab tool number 35. And we'll go, we're doing our face. Let's just do a saving calculate now. And under our link, we are going to do left, left. Oh, actually, what we're going to do here is instead of left, I'm going to just do Z only because we are working on that sub spindle. That checkbox there, and we'll just do uh, 200,000. Okay, so now that we got that calculated here, let's just take a peek and see what we're looking at. Let's just do a quick turning. Move this over here. And I forgot to click the checkbox for the finish, so I'm just going to click that real quick. We'll turn on compensation, save and calculate, simulate here, and we'll do another quick turning. So rough pass and a finish pass down to size. Uh, let's take a peek and see what this looks like in machine sim. All right, so we got our machine sim pulled up here. Let me get it panned around for a good view for you guys. And I'm going to play this through. And we finished or faced off our part right there. So it looks good. So we'll hop out of there real quick. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that exact same tool, and I'm going to do the turning outside of the profile with that one. So I'll just click on turning, and I'll grab our geometry here, and I want to machine all the way up to right there. Grab that same tool.
and we'll go to technology. That looks good. And we'll do a finishing. And we'll do entire geometry with cutter comp turned on. Save and calculate here. And let's go ahead and play that through. All right, let's get into our machine sim here. Zoom in. And let's go and play this through. And you can see that we got a nice outside contour going all the way around, which is exactly what we're looking for. So now um, what we can do is get into our drilling. So what I'll do first is just do a turning drilling and get my Mac 2. I'm going to grab my spot drill, which is going to be my static tooling. And that's going to be my tool number 38. Oh, there it is. It's hiding at the bottom. So we'll grab our tool number 38 here. And go to our technology. My start is going to be the front of the face. My end is also going to be the front of the face. And I'm going to do it up to a diameter of that diameter right there. And then I'll add another 10th all on there, so we'll just do a 206. So we'll save and calculate here. And let's go ahead and simulate this now. And do a turning. And let's just play this through. And that looks exactly what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and check it out in Machine Sim. All right. So in our machine sim, you can see our spot drill there. I'll go ahead and play this through. And we can see we have our spot drill there. So it's exactly what we're looking for. All right. So now um, we need to drill it out with uh, our drill bit. So I am just going to make a copy of what we just did here. And then all I have to do is switch out my tool. So I'm going to grab my tool number 36, get the green check mark here, and I'm gonna change up my uh, levels here. So my start is going to be the same, but my end is going to be, I'm going to go to full diameter to right there, and it'll say full diameter, save and calculate. And also what I'm going to do, as long as I'm drilling everything, is I'm going to do my little bit smaller hole down in there. So I will do a saving copy again and switch out my tool. It's going to be my tool number 37 here. And then we'll switch up our levels. So now my start is going to be right here. And my end is going to be my drill point, which is right there. And we will switch it over to cutter tip. Save and calculate. And let's see how this looks. And we'll just do a simple turning first for our verification. We got a drill all the way down to the correct depth right there. Um, my, this current drill is just a little bit undersized. It's what we actually had on the machine uh, when we're on site. So that's why there is showing a little bit of material there. But um, other than that, we are looking good. So you can see where our previous drill and spot drill came into factor. Uh, let's go ahead and play this through in the machine sim. All right, so we got our machine sim open here. Zoom in here, and it went really quick. Let's slow it down real quick. And just doing a simple drill and move away. So not much going on there. So now what we need, um, all we really have left is our out side profile. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this operation here. And we have two different ways of going about this. Um, we can have it so our profile just goes all the way around, or what we can also do is just do a single profile and do a transform. So I'll show you both different ways. So for that, I'm going to go to my 2.5D and, and just do profile here. And we're going to grab our Mac 2 and say New Geometry. And we're going to go here. 
grab our chain. All the way around. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our end mill here, and we're going to be using tool number 33. And our levels, um, our upper level will be that point right there, and we want to machine down to that flat. And we can do technology, when we can take this all in one cut. Uh, we're cutting soft material here, so let's just do a save and calculate. Let's do a simulate, and we'll play this through in solid verify here. Um, so I'll just go ahead and play it through. I'll slow it down a little bit because in turning we won't be able to see this. So this <clears throat> looks exactly like what we're looking for here. Um, yep, going all the way around. Got our nice hex. Uh, let's take a peek and see what this looks like in the machine sim. All right, so we got our machine sim pulled up here. Let's get it orientated around. And so we're going to be using that tool number 37 right here, which is a live tooling. It's not static like the rest of them. And let's go ahead and play this through here. Now, a um, couple things you'll see. Can I get in view here? Speed it up a little bit. The, you'll see that the tool is going completely around the outside. Um, so that's one way of going about it. Now, let's say we want to just do the fourth act or the, the sub spindle, and we just want the sub spindle to rotate and keep the live tooling kind of stationary. So another way what we can do is get back into our operation here. And for this one, I will do new geometry. And we'll just grab the one line, the green check mark. And now what I'm going to do here is if I just do save and calculate, and I will turn off my links here so we can get a clean tool path. So we got our straight line going across right there. So now if I do a transform and do four axis, we'll include the original. And we are doing every 60 uh, steps, or 60 degrees. And we'll have five additional steps in here. Hit OK. Save. And let's do a solid verify real quick, just to verify that's good. OK, that looks good. So let's go ahead and do a machine sim. We got our machine sim pulled up. Let's go ahead and play this through. Let me get kind of a straight down shot here. And let me slow it down a little bit for you guys. So now you'll see that our spindle is actually turning and it's machining it. So it takes out the movement of that uh, the gang tooling over here, and this is can to help you guys out with um, with space. If you guys don't have enough space in there, um, or, or you know can't fit stuff in there, you got a couple different ways of going about it. Now you'll see as it's machining this, it's on the one side, but what I'm going to show you here is pause this and uh, we'll hop out of here. What I can actually do is go to my tool and instead of using the back um, in the X positive, I can actually do it in the X negative um, if you guys are running tight on uh, space as well. So instead of machining it over in the positive direction over on this side, it will actually machine it over here on this side. Um, let's just play that through and machine some just to show you guys what I'm talking about here. All right, so we got our machine sim pulled up here, and let's kind of zoom in. And see, now you can see it's actually on the opposite side of where it was milling before. Let's speed it up a little bit here. So 
a lot of different options for you guys, and all dependent on you know if you guys have the space or or whatnot. But uh, a lot of different options for you guys on how you guys want to machine uh, those parts. So with that being said, our part is completely done now. So now all we need to do is basically release that part into the uh, parts catcher. So for that, all we have to do is just come in here and we will add a MCO. And I am gonna tell it to eject, do a part eject. And go ahead, yes. And so basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna position the, that uh, subspindle in the correct position to um, over over there, and then what it's going to do is it's going to unclamp, and then it's going to do an air blast through the spindle and shoot the part out, so it gets caught by the parts catcher. So that's um, pretty much it for this uh, the subspindle. Um, better save and calculate that. There we go. So that's pretty much, pretty much it for the uh, doing all the work on the subspindle here. Um, so not next week, but the week after, we'll be covering the channel synchronization to get all of these operations all in balance. So you see I did everything right in order here, um, everything on the main spindle first, and then doing the subspindle. So with the channel synchronization, what it will do is it will allow to um, automatically rearrange these for us so we can do so we can run the main spindle and the sub spindle at the exact same time without running into any crashing or any uh, clearance issues or anything like that. So, um, but uh, next week I will not be here. I'm going to be in Dallas at SolidWorks World. So if any guys are going to be around for that, definitely come check us out at, uh, I think we're at uh, booth 410 um, in the apartment pavilion. But uh, other than that, uh, we will talk to you guys in two weeks to go over that channel synchronization. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.